Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for a very special trail running shoe review. We're looking at the Scott Supertrack RC 2.0. It's a 500 mile review, so it's gonna be a little bit off the cuff and ab lib. I want to look at what the shoe is like out of the box at 60 miles, then at 500 miles. We'll look at the wear on the bottom, how the upper's holding up, and just why I keep coming back to this shoe for all of my trail and sky running races. We're also gonna compare it to some other trail running shoes on the market, because you all know I've been testing a lot out of late. And we're gonna compare it to the original Supertrack RC, which was my favorite trail running shoe of all time. But let's begin with some info on the shoes themselves. So the Scott Supertrack RC was originally made for Transvulcania. It's in La Palma and it's a volcanic island, really technical course, and that's where this grip pattern comes in you'll see it's got a radial pattern just on the outsole that grips to anything i've actually found them really good in fell races trail races and of course on mountainous terrain they've actually changed the pattern since they updated it to the 2.0 version you're now missing the lugs just in the middle here they used to have some small little ones that used to either snap off or get mud stuck in them so it does get rid of that claggy mud a bit easier now. It's a five mil drop and the midsole is made out of EVA. It's actually a dual density EVA, so it's soft at the top, which gives you that impact absorption, but it's a bit firmer underfoot. So while I don't believe it has a rock plate, it feels like it does. It's very protective on the more technical courses. As for the upper, it's made from some black shola. That works very well in sunlight and it doesn't break down. Now the original Super Track RC was more of a fabric material, like a, this is a mesh, the other one was like a mesh, but it was more of a fabric type mesh. And what I used to find is that in the crease there, it used to split every single time. It was always the first thing that went on the shoe before even the outsole, and it was irritating as hell because it used to let water in in winter. They seem to have fixed that because I've not been getting any splits um, in there. I'll show you this one, which is now at 500 miles. As you can see, you get a proper toe off there, but there are no cracks in the material at all. This makeup comes together for a really protective, comfortable shoe. And talking of comfort, we need to discuss the width. Very wide indeed. It's actually wider than the original Super Track. That is something they listen to feedback on apparently. Um, so you get a better toe box. The tongue itself is really well padded. Not so much so that it adds weight, but you don't feel the laces under there. And actually the laces themselves deserve a mention because they're probably the best laces I've ever had in a trail running shoe. They don't slip and they don't even need a double knot. I've never had them come undone once in a race. They fit true to size, I'm an eight and a half UK, and that's precisely what I buy in the shoe. Let's compare them very quickly though to some other trail running shoes on the market and explain why you would buy these over others. So the Scarpa Ribel Run is one I've mentioned very recently. I questioned whether this could be the most underrated trail running shoe of 2021. It is a corker. However, I had issues with stability um, around my ankle on this shoe, and I couldn't figure out why. If you have a look at the upper, just see how flexible that is in the ankle, just around there. A lot of movement. Now, for someone like me who pronates and has a lot of knee movement, that can be an issue, and it's proven the case. Whereas if you look at the Super Track RC, it takes quite a bit to move that. Now, this isn't uncomfortable by any means and bear in mind these are new out the box these are after 60 miles so you've got a little bit more movement in there they've certainly freed up and molded to the shape of my foot but i still got that secure hold in the upper so if we compare them as well to the adidas speed ultra you'll see the same thing again. Look how much that moves in the upper. And that's fantastic for if you want a breathable shoe and if you have a secure footing and no issues like I do with pronation. But for someone like me, that's where all my issues have been coming from. Now, as for the tread against other shoes, um, the Scarpa and very similar to the Adidas, uh, you could say the same as well for something like the Glide Ultra. Yes, they are more of a trail shoe than a sky running shoe, but the grip itself is quite limited. It's very sticky, very good on rock, and I would say all of those shoes are far better for sticky grip than the Super Track RC, but what you don't get with any of them 
is that lug pattern, that radial lug pattern that just seems to stick to anything. They're not fantastic on wet rock, but they're good on rock in general. And as soon as you go off piste onto some grassy or muddy terrain, they're like glue. Your foot does not slip, you put it down and it stays where you've put it. I had these just the other week out on the Lake District and honestly guys, I had so much fun in that run, I didn't have to think about my feet. This is what it looks like, the outer, after 60 miles. So you'll see that the lugs are all still there, perfectly fine, and the lug depth is very, very similar to the new version of the shoe. You'll just notice a little bit of wear there on the outside, which is because of my striking pattern. However, if you go to 500 miles, and this is where the problem starts a little bit with the shoe, it turns into a bit of a pancake. Now, I actually, to be fair, after 200, 250 miles, think that any sky running or trail running shoe should be retired into a rotation for training. You shouldn't be using it in racing. Um, it's just not gonna have the same grip and it's not gonna be the same shoe as it is intended to be. And you can see there, I've completely worn the lug away after 500 miles. However, I still wear this shoe around my local trails and when I don't need the grip and if I'm on softer ground. The problem I do have is that this Eva has completely squashed down now. I get very little support, oops, sorry. I get very little support out of that. Um, when you compare it with the one that's at 60 miles, you can see precisely what I mean. It's like a boomerang there and the um, Eva overlay has actually flattened right down into a pancake. But one upside to the longer mileage in this shoe is it does get better with wear. Um, if you take it out the box, you might find it a little bit stiff and hard to get used to initially. It takes two or three young runs to really break it in. And with every run after that, it just gets better and more like a slipper. To the point where actually, if it wasn't for the fact that this pancake outsole meant that I had sore calves at the end of a longer run, I would wanna wear this more than the ones with the better lugs because they feel and slip on just like a slipper. Now with the original Super Track RCs, the outsole broke down much quicker. And as I mentioned, the other problem you had was around the edges there on the upper. They broke down after probably 200 miles, you'd start seeing that crease cracking, which is a major problem. That doesn't seem to happen with the new version. So that's a big bonus for me. But what do I actually use the Scott Super Track RC for? Well, fell running in winter, spot on for that. Um, if the lug depth has worn away through the summer and there's not much left, then they can be a bit short, but they're still good for the more traily fells. Trail running, perfectly fine. In all honesty, it doesn't quite give enough back if it is a completely flat, non-technical trail. But for something with a little bit of technical ascending and descending, or where you do need grip, they're spot on for that. And general day-to-day -day training. To be honest, it is probably the only all-round shoe in terms of seasonal, um, what you're going on under fit, underfoot and distant, you can do it all. The only one thing I would say is that lug pattern on the bottom needs protecting. That's the magic of the shoe when you get into the sky running races. And if you wear that down, you lose it. So you can't get it back, as you can see with uh, my 500 mile shoe. And this is actually the reason I came away from the shoe for a little bit, because I was just sick of having to constantly buy a new pair when I was coming up to a race. I would recommend that you save the shoe for racing and that you save it for those runs where you really do need them. Try and wear something that doesn't wear down as fast in training and go back to these for the races, which leads me nicely onto the pros and cons. So we'll begin with the cons because there's very few of them. As I mentioned, lug pattern wearing down quite quickly. I would say it's got 200 miles maximum where you'll want to be racing in it. The Eva midsole does break down to a pancake, which makes it impossible to running for more than maybe four or five miles after you get past 350 to 400 miles. And finally, 
the price. It's been around for two, three years now, and it still retails out at more than £140, and it's impossible to find for less than £115, including delivery. So it's still a very expensive shoe, considering how long it's been around, but for me, that speaks volumes of the quality of the build. Let's go to the pros. So we'll pick the new one to show you. Radial lug pattern is perfect for all terrain, whether that's sky running, fell running, trail running, which goes straight into the second pro. Mixture of terrain and distances that you can run this thing on. The cushioning is enough that you could run a shorter ultra in this thing. Uh, probably a 55 mile would be perfectly fine, even a 60 mile. The fit is spot on. The laces really do pull it in. You get a very secure lockdown in the ankle, which I've already mentioned is perfect for pronation. And the toe box is wide. You won't have any issues with your pinky toe and the middle of the shoe is ample wide enough as well. And of course, I've already mentioned it, but the variety of terrain, distance and types of races you're gonna be able to use this shoe for is great. Um, for me, if I didn't have the Scott Super Track RC, I would probably have to have two or three shoes being rotated for the different types of races and seasons that I run in. With the Super Track RC, I could have that as my go-to shoe and only run in it. So in conclusion, the Scott Super Track RC 2.0 can be running in races up to 200 to 250 miles. Beyond that point, I would use it more as a training shoe. Um, and I'm still using it even past the 500 mark because the upper's still good. And while the grip has really worn away, it's still good on my local trails. As long as I'm not going over the four or five mile distance, at which point it starts to give me sore calves um, and achy legs, but it feels so much like a slipper that I keep going back to it. I absolutely love the shoe and I would highly, highly recommend you look at it if you've not tried it yet. Right guys, we're gonna leave the review there. If you enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up, it really helps the channel. If you wanna see more of these sort of things, subscribe as well, uh, that way you won't miss out on any future reviews. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you with the next one. See you later.